I don't think I filmed an intro for this video, so I'm retroactively filming it. This is a 2007 Chevy Trailblazer. It's got the 4.2 liter straight six engine. The complaint is that it runs rough when they cold start it in the morning. Sometimes it'll actually die. But he said if you give it some gas, it'll usually stay running and pretty quickly it clears up and then it runs fine for the rest of the day. That's all I know. They drove it here from, I don't know, 45 minutes away. So yeah, once it snaps out of it, it's totally fine. The check engine light is on. He wants me to, to replace the fuel filter, but there is no fuel filter on this car. So yeah, let's get to it. Also, I got a lot of good feedback in the last video about the cameras. So I'm gonna be filming this video using three different cameras, starting with my old camera, which is a Canon Vixia R700. And then we'll switch to the Panasonic Lumix G85. And then we'll finish up with the Canon M50. Both of these cameras are gonna share this Movo, I think it's called a VX10R Pro. Yeah, shotgun mic. So I chose this one because it's a super cardioid microphone, which means that it picks up sound both in front and a little bit in back. Because a lot of times when I'm filming, just like this, I'm actually behind the camera. So anyway, tell me what you guys think. I'll try to put little notes in the bottom to tell you which camera I'm using. Keep in mind, these are out of the box settings. I haven't adjusted anything. Like I haven't even adjusted the white balance or done anything with the color. So don't judge those parts too much. We're just looking more at like how the focus looks, how the resolution is, and I don't know, general feel, and then we'll try to make a decision. So I don't think I can keep both of them. Oh, it's not happy. That's good, I'm glad it wasn't some intermittent stupid thing. Let's get it in the shop. Should be fun. Well, it's not happy. Not happy at all. Come on, little trailblazer. Hey, give it a little gas and it's okay. But it doesn't want to idle. Come on, autofocus. You can do it. There you go. Not so bad. Okay, right now. Interesting. Exhaust camshaft position system performance. Knock sensor. EVAP small leak. Okay. What else do we have? Steering wheel angle sensor. Pass, pass. 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 Alright. Not ran, not ran. Not ran. Okay, well, something to go off of. All right, this problem seems to be seems to be temperature related, so we're gonna put this one back outside for right now. Got a feeling that the uh, the cam actuator solenoid's the problem, and in the cold weather, it's doing funky stuff with that cam, advancing the exhaust cam. We'll stuff it out here for right now. Come back when it's had a good cold soak. Where'd you go? <laughs> Autofocus test. Can it keep up with a three year old? Yeah. See what kind of you want. Test out the uh, image stabilization. It's pretty phenomenal. I have to say. It's not GoPro-like, I mean, 
It works differently. The GoPro keeps the background, kind of keeps the background stationary and the everything in the foreground moves. This just takes kind of takes the jitter out of the picture. Not quite sure why the ECT is not showing any value, but oh well. Okay, so after initial startup, it must bring the, the thing back to zero. So that may be where we we're finding the problem initially. But we gotta get it to act up. It must not be cold enough. Well, we'll try again tomorrow morning, I guess. All right, we're back on this trailblazer. Let's see if we can get it to act up. It's been sitting overnight, so. Mm, why are we getting nothing? There it is. So I commanded it to 35% and the cam, cam didn't move at all. Slowly coming up. But it's running fine. I think we saw this yesterday. Let's see what it does when it drops the command back to zero. Well, I don't know, it seemed to work. Maybe that's normal. And it's running fine now. Okay, well let's get it in the shop. Let's pull that, let's pull that solenoid out. Have a look at it. Visual inspection on the cam, the VVT solenoid for the exhaust cam. Now well, this should be the, solenoid right here, this little guy. Let's just pop it out and have a look-see. I'm not sure what I'm seeing on the, uh, on the data there. So it looked like the desired and the actual were following each other, but they didn't match the command. So I'm not sure what the difference is between command and desired as far as position goes. <laughs> really, DM? Really? Sorry guys, I, t I forgot to turn the ISO up, so your last clip was super dark. I'm still learning the camera. Anyway, our friends at GM decided to make this VVT solenoid impossible to remove without pulling the power steering pump. So I guess that's where we're headed next. And it looks like, well, I mean, it's obviously got oil in the connector here, so Regardless of what we find, the VVT solenoid is no good. It's, the oil leak is a problem in and of itself. There we go. Well, it's not too bad, but there's definitely some buildup and debris on the screens here. Well, that's not helping anything, but yeah, the big problem is see all the oil inside that connector. So we're going to have to replace that no matter what we do. I'll go ahead and order one and then we'll, we'll move on with life. Kind of bugs me that we haven't been able to reproduce the problem other than that first time I started it up and I didn't know what I was looking for but well, you can't make this stuff up I literally just turned on the camera and wouldn't you know the furnace kicked on anyway here is a new VCT solenoid straight from our friends at General Motors
Looks the same to me. There's the part number if anybody needs it. And they had this in stock locally, so I imagine it's a high failure item. Like I said, I know other GM engines have these problems. What's cool about this new tripod, I'll show you guys in a minute, but I can actually extend it out so I can put the camera over top of, you know, fender or whatever I'm working on and get those sweet money shots. There we go. Of course, you guys can only see the back of my hand anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm trying. Well, previously, I used a magnet, magnetic arm, to do a lot of my shooting. But the problem with that is if I attached it to a vehicle, every time I made a, a tiny little, you know, every time I moved the thing a little bit, you know, just tightening up a bolt or whatever, it would, the camera would oscillate and then the footage would come out all shaky. And the old camera that I used did not tolerate shaky, shaky situations. I also cleaned this connector, blew all the oil out of it, as much of it as I could. I have heard, kind of anecdotally, that you can actually get oil into the connector and it'll, it'll creep up through the insulation and run all the way back to the ECM. I've never seen that happen personally, but I've I've watched some videos. I watched a video, uh, what was it? Advanced Level Auto. He was working on a car where there was oil inside the ECM and people were speculating that it came from a sensor, oil pressure sensor or something that was letting the oil come capillary action through the insulation. I don't know if it really hurts anything, but you know. At least GM was nice enough to put holes in the pulley here so we can install the power steering pump without pulling the pulley off. <sighs> yep, I hear you. Power tools. See how much that belt squeals. When I blew that connector out, I basically got oil everywhere. That looks a whole lot different. Remember before we had that step up? So it should drop off here. Yep, there it goes. Alright, I'm gonna put it outside, let it cool off, and we'll try the same test again. I'm playing around with the Canon M50 camera this morning. Everything you've seen so far has been that Panasonic Lumix G85. And the big advantage of the Canon is supposed to be the autofocus. But I've noticed. So I've got it on face tracking right now. Doesn't seem to work that well. Like, I don't think I'm in focus. Like it's tracking, the, I can see the box tracking my face. And the G85 does the same thing, but the focus doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't work that well. Yeah, it's working pretty good right now. Anyway, we're gonna play around with that. I mean, the dual pixel autofocus definitely is better than whatever the G85 has, but the G85's got a lot of advantages over this camera. I think the image quality is better, or it's at least as good, even though it has a smaller sensor, and the build quality is way better. The lens is way better. The lens on this Canon camera sucks. 
The worst thing about it is the zoom. So you gotta actually rotate this thing to zoom. But the direction you rotate it is backwards of every other camera that I've used. So, yeah, that's gonna take some getting used to. Well, the problem today is it's not really that cold. You can see there's no frost or ice built up on the car. So I don't know how well this is gonna work, but it's the best we're gonna do. It's been sitting overnight. Some smart guy left the scan tool dongle plugged in last night and ran the battery down. So we'll be back. See what happens here. Yeah, it's about the same. Okay, now it should switch off. Yeah, maybe it's okay. Come on, focus. Okay, well, I guess we'll compare it to what we had before and go from there. Well, I'm gonna go for a little drive. I'm not really sure. I can't reproduce the problem we had the first time we drove it where the, the throttle was kind of falling on its face. It's running fine. I think it's probably got a bad thermostat though. It's only up to 135 degrees and it's been running for almost 20 minutes. I mean, it's cold today, but it's not that cold. I stopped and grabbed a thermostat. We drove all the way to town and back, and the temperature never got above 160. This is generic OBD2 data, by the way, so we're, we're not getting fooled out by the computer. And then the steering angle sensor seems to be a problem. It set the, it turns on the traction control lights pretty quickly after driving, so. I don't know, I've gotta look into what's involved with that. I don't know if I can do that job. I think you have to have the factory scan tool to calibrate those steering angle sensors. So we may have to let that one go to the dealership. But we're gonna put a thermostat in it and possibly clean the throttle body and then yeah ship it. Well if you've never done a thermostat on one of these GM 4.2 straight sixes it's kind of a job. It doesn't live where you would think you know up here on the top where it's easy to get to. It's actually way down here, buried on the left-hand side of the engine, towards the bottom. That's it right there. So what I chose to do was take this, there's a bracket here, and then pull the alternator off and just kind of set it to the side. And then you can kind of use your long monkey arms to reach down in there and work it loose. Oh no, Canon autofocus. What are you doing? There you are. So, here's our replacement. And of course, there's your problem, lady. She'll come apart. Anyway, I'm going to stick this one in. There's nothing exciting about installing a thermostat. You guys have seen me do it dozens of times. I will not bore you with those details. I will point out that the Canon seems to have the heater control figured out. The second I turned the camera on, the uh, radiant tube heater fired up. So, At least some things never change. <laughs> there comes the heat every single time I push record button. The furnace kicks on. Anyway, this scan tool here is wireless. It has a Bluetooth connection to the dongle in the car. So while it's outside in the freezing cold night, I can snoop on it from inside the nice warm shop. And see right here, it's currently at 206 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's right where it should be. So yeah, it definitely needed a thermostat. I'm filming this part on my old camera. Feel pretty confident you're gonna see a substantial difference. So this is a Canon Vixia R700. It's just a cheapo camcorder. And it's got a tiny little sensor. I think it's like two and a half megapixels or something. And also the minimum focal distance is, I wanna say it's like 38 millimeters equivalent. So it's a really narrow lens. And it makes everything feel kind of claustrophobic when you film indoors with it. The other cameras I have, they're both, 
I think around 24 millimeters equivalent, so they're quite a bit wider. Anyway, tell me what you guys think about it, and uh, we'll try to make some decisions. As far as the Trailblazer goes, I think we're going to stop working on it for now. Is it fixed? I'm not sure. I was not able to reproduce that stumble at idle. You know, we caught it on camera one time, but that's the only time it did it, and I wasn't prepared. I didn't, you know, I didn't look at any data, so I don't really know what happened. I know that it did not set a code at that time because there was no freeze frame data for that, but the parts we replaced, I feel confident needed to be replaced, but I do not know for sure if it's going to fix the problem. He initially wanted me to replace the fuel filter. There is no fuel filter on this truck. It's a 2007. The older Trailblazers had one, but this one is a returnless system, so there is no serviceable filter. It just has a sock or something in the tank, so we can't do that. I'm going to clean the throttle body. It's pretty late tonight. I'm going to call it a night, and I'll do that in the morning. That will help too, but I didn't find any other problems. The mass airflow sensor is fine. The throttle position sensor seems to be working fine, so I don't know. I'm going to send it home, and I guess we'll see what happens. As far as the other codes go, not worried about that knock sensor code. I'm sure that's something related to the other, you know, the misfire issues that it had. The EVAP small leak, we're probably not going to pursue that, at least not at this time. It's been my observation that this time of the year where we have these big fluctuations in temperature, a lot of times you get EVAP codes and as soon as things kind of steady out and the monitors run again, it'll clear itself right out. As far as the steering angle sensor goes, I talked to the customer. He said it's been an issue for 10 years, the whole time that they've owned it, and he's had it, had it to several different shops trying to fix the problem, and he, he's not worried about it, doesn't want to go anywhere with that. So, yeah, that's where we're going to leave it. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time. All right, guys, the video's over, but if you're a camera nerd, stick around because I need some help. So on this Panasonic G85, if I'm in the manual mode here, manual exposure mode, I can adjust the ISO, the ISO, you know, to, to coarsely adjust my exposure, but it jumps right from 400 to 800 to 1600. So I don't know what that is, log scale or whatever. And then I guess the way they want you to fine tune the exposure is by changing the shutter speed. But that seems weird to me. Like for video, I wouldn't think you would want to be changing the shutter speed all the time, but you know, maybe that's maybe that's the only way you can do it. I don't know. Or I guess you could change it with the aperture. So I don't know if there's a way to work around that to fine tune the ISO or if I need to be using aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode. I don't know. So yeah, tell me what you guys think about that. So on the Canon, if you go to the ISO, you can adjust it in pretty fine increments and you really don't have to mess with the shutter speed or the aperture which I think would be the better way but I don't know also is there a zoom lens for this EFM mount that doesn't absolutely suck because that's the worst part about this camera is this crappy lens anyway Bye. Bye.